Welcome. My name is Mike. I'm a respiratory therapist from Getting It, and I'm here today to go over the operation of the Servo U ventilator. The device has no front or back. It can be turned and the screen repositioned to meet the needs of your environment. The Servo U ventilator utilizes a unique module system. There are six slots on the device for batteries or clinical modules. Modules can be inserted or taken out of the device at any time. Available modules include EDI for NAVA capabilities, neonatal Y sensor, and end tidal CO2. Modules are interchangeable between the Servo U, the Servo N, and the Servo I devices. To get started, plug in the power cord, then connect to your air and oxygen sources. From there, Locate the hatch. Open the hatch and locate the power switch. To turn the device on, pull the toggle down and push it over. Note the green power light is now illuminated. Upon startup, you will be prompted to run a pre-use check. The pre-use check takes approximately five minutes and should be run between patients. To activate the pre-use check, press yes on the screen. I will then be prompted with illustrations that'll guide me through the startup. And now we're gonna do the first step of the pre-use check. The illustration on the screen will tell us what to do. We're going to take our test tube and connect it to the inspiratory and expiratory outlets on the ventilator. Then we'll acknowledge by pressing okay on the screen. We will then continue to cycle through tests on the ventilator. To perform the power test, simply unplug the unit, listen for the audible tone, and plug the unit back in. The final step of the pre-use check is the circuit test. It's important to use the circuit filters, and any accessories that you plan to utilize with the patient. If an active humidification system is going to be used, assure the humidifier is set to off and the chamber is full of water. Note on the screen, step one. Step two is to occlude the circuit. Once the circuit is connected and occluded, Confirm on the screen and follow the on-screen prompts. The circuit test will pressurize the circuit. Once pressurized, the final step is to remove the circuit from the occlusion and leave it open to room air. Once the pre-use check is completed, we are taken to the standby screen. Note, no ventilation is occurring while we are in standby. In the upper corner, I can see the results of my pre-use check and my patient circuit test. I can also run the circuit test separately. Noting down here, I have my patient category. This is where I can select pediatric, adult, or neonatal. For now, we will select adult. In my ventilation type, I can choose invasive or non-invasive ventilation. For now, we will choose invasive. Over to my ventilation mode, I have the option of all the modes available to me on the ventilator. For more information on a mode, I can press and hold. I will now get an informatic on the screen which will describe in detail the mode that I have selected. On the mode screen, all of the settings available for the mode are in one place. To change a setting, simply press it. A window on the bottom will appear and you can make your adjustment up or down. Once you've adjusted it to the setting desired, press the green check mark to accept the setting change. Some settings on the ventilator will open a dynamic image screen where detailed information about the proposed changes can be seen. Anywhere on the interface you see an I, you can press it for more information on each setting. Once we're happy with our settings, we can press the green arrow and accept. I will now note the settings on the bottom of my screen, and to begin ventilation, I simply press the start ventilation button. 
Now that we're ventilating, let's get familiar with the user interface. On this, the right side of the ventilator, I can see all my measured parameters. At the bottom, I can see my set parameters. Over here are my menu buttons. When I press the green arrow, I can see all the parameters that are measured in this mode. When I press the mode arrow, I can see all the set parameters. So now, by pushing those two arrows, I can see all the set and measured parameters on the screen at once. The alarm lamp is located at the top of the screen. It is visible from 360 degrees. There are three colored alarm indicators, red, yellow, and blue. Red is the highest priority. A yellow alarm indicates a medium priority condition. The blue alarm indicates a low priority condition. To silence an alarm, identify the alarm silence button on the top left of the screen. Notice the bell. Once pressed, we will have two minutes of silence. From there, there's two spots on the screen that will indicate the alarm. First, we have our alarm information window, which will also indicate the number of active present alarms. Once pressed, the alarms that are active will be displayed as well as information on remedying the alarms. In addition to the alarm information window, active alarms can be visualized on the measurement side of the screen. To address an active alarm, you can simply press the flashing measurement, which will take you to your quick setting adjustment. From here, I can set the screen, hit accept, and I've addressed my alarm condition. To access the alarm settings, press the alarm limits button. From here, high and low alarms can be set for each parameter. The white arrow indicates the measured value for each parameter. You also have the ability for auto set of alarms. When pressed, the machine will recommend settings for each parameter. Alarm volume may also be adjusted if necessary. Now that we're back to ventilation, note here in the corner that the tidal volume per predicted body weight is not active. In order to get that information, we need to put some data into the ventilator. So I could press the screen here, or I could go up to predicted body weight and press. Once I've opened this menu, I need to input the gender and the height of my patient. I can also push information to get more data. Let's input a female that's a height of 160 centimeters. Once I've pressed done, I now have the predicted body weight displayed on the screen and the tidal volume for each breath is now displayed. If I want to adjust the tidal volume according to body weight, I now have the ability to do that on the screen. When I push my tidal volume, if I want to ventilate six milliliters per kilogram for this patient, I can adjust that directly on the screen. You'll note that I now have the tidal volume, total tidal volume, as well as the tidal volume per body weight displayed on the screen. If I drop that to six, I'll see that the proper tidal volume for this patient is 310 to deliver six per kilogram. To deliver a set increase in oxygen to your patient, note the button on the left bottom corner. When I press this and hold it down, I've now activated a one minute O2 boost. I've also activated alarm silence. To cancel the O2 boost, I simply press the red arrow. The O2 boost in this instance was set to deliver 100%. If I want to adjust that to an incremental increase, I can easily do that by going to the maneuver screen. I want to press my O2 boost level button. Then I want to press the 100%. Now, my O2 percentage has lit up and I can adjust the desired level for oxygen increase. You will note the oxygen boost level will be displayed on the screen at all times. When I press maneuvers, I have four options. We've already talked about the O2 boost level. Let's talk about the manual breath. When the manual breath button is tapped, the ventilator system will initiate a new breath cycle according to the current ventilator settings. 
To calculate our static measurements, we're going to utilize the inspiratory and expiratory hold buttons. First, we'll press the inspiratory hold. Then, we'll press the expiratory hold. Upon completion, we'll have our static measurements with a timestamp. We can also press the information button to get more information on the individual static measurements. From here, returning to the maneuver screen, we can access our nebulizer. Every servo U has an integrated aerogen nebulizer. From here, you can either set a timed nebulization from five to 30 minutes, or you have the ability to set a continuous nebulization. To activate the nebulizer, simply press the nebulizer button and you will note on the screen that the nebulizer is active. There are six different views on the servo U ventilator. When I press the view screen, I can see all six depicted. We've spent most of our time in advanced view. Advanced view has two rows of patient measurements. Basic view has one row displayed. There are also views for loops and the servo compass. Two unique views are family view. The second view is distance view. The family view can be utilized to create a more calming environment. If a more complete clinical picture is needed, merely pressing the screen will take you to your last set view. In distance view, five large numerical values are displayed. This can be very useful for patients in isolation or if a procedure is taking place in the room. The disconnection suction feature can be utilized for a brief disconnection from the ventilator. During the disconnection, the ventilator will not alarm or cycle for a period of one minute when disconnection is enabled. To go through the maneuver, first we push the disconnection suction button. There are four steps to the disconnection maneuver. The first is preparation, where we can set an oxygen level for pre and post oxygenation. Once I hit accept, I begin pre-oxygenation. This is a two minute period where I have a window to begin my disconnection maneuver. Once disconnected, the ventilator will cease ventilation for 60 seconds. Those 60 seconds are displayed on the screen. If I reconnect within that 60 second time period, ventilation resumes. If I continue to stay disconnected beyond that time period, I will receive an audible alarm. Once reconnected within the 60 second time period, a post oxygenation sequence will occur. To access the trending data, go over to the menu key. By pushing the green arrow, I can see my extended menu functions. Among them is my trends and logs button. From here, if I select trends, it will take me to my trending screen. From the trending screen, I can set certain parameters. The first is I can set the amount of time of the trended information that I can see. You can view up to a maximum of 72 hours of trended information. By taking my finger and scrolling up or down, I can view the displayed parameters. I also have the ability to organize them in the way that I see fit. I organize them by taking my finger and dropping and dragging the parameters into any order that is desired. Once set, I can take my finger and scroll left and right to see parameter information at different times. In the corner, I can see my mode and any events that have also taken place at that moment in time. Let's determine if a given breath was delivered by the machine or triggered by the patient. I will now illustrate how to determine on the screen if your patient is triggering. There is a dedicated lung symbol that appears on the screen when the patient initiates a breath. I can also see on my flow or pressure pattern if the breath has been flow triggered or pressure triggered that is indicated with a white line. On the upper right hand corner of the screen is the power indicator. When pressed, you can see your battery status and the amount of time remaining on each battery as well as a total backup time. By accessing our mode settings, 
we now can see all of the settings for this particular mode. For example, if we were to choose the trigger, we could increase or decrease the trigger at the bottom. If we increase the trigger to a max number, you'll notice that there is a plus on the bottom of the screen. This is the safety scale. These are the most commonly used settings. To set a setting outside of the most commonly used, I want to acknowledge the safety scale by tapping plus. From here, I can now increase my settings. You will notice that the color scheme turned yellow. As I continue to increase, it turns red as a safety indicator. Another example of this is in the peep setting. If I want to go below a set peep of five, you'll notice that hitting minus does not allow me to do that. By pressing the plus key, I can now set a number below five. The screen can be locked by accessing the lock screen button. By pushing the button, I get an indicator on the screen that says, do you really want to lock the screen? Once the screen is locked, the machine will not respond to regular touches on the screen. To unlock the screen, I go to the indicator, tap and hold to unlock. By pressing for two seconds, the screen will then go back to an unlocked state. To change the modes once ventilating, press the modes button. From here, you can see a previously used mode displayed in the bottom right corner. An arrow indicator over the mode will indicate which mode you were recently in. By pressing that, you have the option of returning to those settings. If I hit yes and accept, I've now gone back to my last set mode. 40 screenshots or recordings can be saved on the ventilator or they can be exported to a USB drive. In order to record a screenshot, press the camera button. When pressed, the screen is saved. In order to get waveform data, press the recording button. Once pressed, 15 seconds of waveform data before and after the press of the button will be stored on the device. In order to access the media that you saved, press the media button in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Once pressed, my first tab is for saved screenshots that I can cycle through with my finger. The second tab is for the recordings that I've captured. The third tab is to export data. In order to export data, I need to utilize the USB port underneath the screen. Once the USB stick is inserted, press export. To stop ventilation and put the machine in standby, press the standby key. That button alone will not discontinue ventilation. There's a second safety step required to stop the ventilator. From here, I have a stop ventilation. Pressing and holding this button for two seconds will place the device in standby. This concludes our orientation to the Servo U ventilator. Thank you for joining me today. Please be on the lookout for new videos and e-learnings from Gettinga.